Hi, in this video I'm going to be doing an unboxing and in-depth product review on the Energizer Vision HD Focus Torch. Now I've already used this torch, so I'll just put it back in the packaging just to show you. It comes in a blister pack. In the package you'll get the torch and they give you six batteries with it. The batteries they supply are the alkaline batteries, however I highly recommend you use rechargeable batteries because you will see that when it's on the high setting the torch does utilize the batteries quite quickly. Right, this is the back of the blister pack for your reference. Right, this is what the torch looks like. You'll notice there is a rubber button there that is the on off button. At the back is where you unscrew it to insert your batteries. This torch is splash resistant and you'll see there's a rubber seal at the back there and you'll also notice the button is rubber. This torch uses six batteries. My advice is use rechargeable batteries of at least 2000 milliamp hours. The batteries are inserted with the positive facing inwards and you put three on each side. You will notice it is spring loaded. On the back it does show the battery orientation. Right, this does require some force. You need to press and turn at the same time. You might need to do this a few times to get it right. It is quite stiff even though it is in the threads. They've designed the torch in such a way that you have to turn this quite tightly in order for the torch to come on. For example, if I switch the torch on and off, nothing is happening. I have to turn this all the way in before the torch activates. There you can see the torch goes on once this is turned quite tightly. The size of the torch is 22.5 centimeters long. The fattest part of the torch is 46 millimeters. The mass of the torch with the batteries included is 429 grams. The torch operates as follows. One press gives you the full power for the torch, the maximum lumens. If you wait a little bit and you depress the power button again, it just turns the torch off. If you press the power button twice quickly, it will take you to the second level, which is a lower lumen amount. There you can see it is lower lumens. If you press the power button three times quickly, it'll take you to the emergency light. One, two, three. You can also vary the lumens by pressing and holding the power button. I'll demonstrate that on the second setting. So I press it once, I press it twice, and now I press and hold the button and you should be able to see the brightness going dimmer and then brighter. And what you'll notice is there are three LEDs. As you can see, I'm pressing and holding the button and it is toggling between one, two, and three. So you can see these two here are focused while this one is diffused. It's got a rough finish. You can barely see the LED while these two here have a focused beam. You can set the type of light depending on when you let go of the power button. So you can choose any combination of LED lighting. And that's the maximum lighting. And that's the dimmer lighting. Right, I'll now show you some outdoor tests at night so you get an idea of how effective this torch is in the dark. Right, so you're seeing a pool and there's an outdoor building there, it's called a LARPA. From here to the back of that wall is 24 meters. I'm going to now shine the torch into the outdoor LARPA. So you can see how effective that torch is, it lights up that outdoor area completely. So there's the LARPA and behind that, which is about another 15 meters, you can see into the trees. Switch it off. Okay, and if you're a camera enthusiast, I've set my ISO to 4000 and here I'm going to shine into the LARPA again. Right, I'm now standing outside, there are no street lights on, and I'm going to shine down the road. Look along the wall, and there you can see how far the beam goes. So it doesn't quite reach the end of the road, although the stop sign at the bottom is reflecting. So if I shine along the wall, I mean you can definitely see along the wall, but it doesn't quite get to the end of the road. Uh, that is at least 70 meters. To the end of that road. 
Right, so if I shine up the road, you can see along this wall how useful it is. I mean, it really lights up the wall. If you want to deceive somebody who's hiding there, the torch is definitely providing that feature. Right, so I'm outside now. There is some lighting, but if I add the torch and I pan along the wall, look along the wall there, and then there are some trees in the distance there. Look at that. I mean, it is shining on those trees. You can see it, although the ones in the far distance are not that visible. Right, I'm standing under a palm tree, and the tree is eight meters high, and I'm going to pan up the tree, and you'll see the torch. And off and on. Right, so I've set the ISO to 5000 and this is a 5 meter by 6 meter room. If I shine onto the wall, you can see how bright it is. Uh, there's my desk. And this is the secondary setting of the torch. And this is very close to what I see with my eye. So about an ISO of 5000 is pretty close. So the brightness you're seeing is the brightness of the second function on the torch, the lower function. Not the lowest, but just the lower function. All right, just comparing the different torch strengths. This is the full power. This is the secondary setting. This is the emergency. So this is the lowest setting, still usable. You could leave this on now for in excess of 22 hours. So if you had a power outage, you could just have this torch on for at least 20 hours with this very low LED setting. On the back, it claims that in low mode, it can give you 220 lumens for 19 hours. So I tested that. Right, I've had this torch on for almost 22 hours because I switched it on at 10 p.m. yesterday and it is almost 8, it's quarter to 8 today. I'm well over the 19 hours which it said it would operate at. Right, just having a look at the Lux for this current set of batteries, 167 Lux at 20 centimeters. I know this is not the standard way of measuring, but all I'm trying to do is to determine how much the batteries have discharged in terms of the Lux. So I'm now going to put a pair of fresh batteries in and see how much the original batteries had depleted. Right, I've put in fresh batteries now and it's at 251 lumens. So it was still operating fairly well even after 22 hours. But remember, it was on the low setting of the torch. Right, some things I've noticed about this torch. If you have it on full power, you'll notice that this heats up quite considerably. Here is an infrared thermometer and I'll just measure the temperature so long. And there you can see 27.6 degrees room temperature. Now I'll put the torch on full brightness. Right, so it's been about four minutes and there you can see it's already above 10 degrees rise in temperature. Right, it's been about six minutes and uh, as you can see 47.9 degrees. So that's a 20 degree rise already. And just on the front there, I'm getting a 51 degree. So don't be alarmed if your torch is on and you feel it in your hand heating up quite considerably, in fact. Right, the torch has been on for about 10 minutes now. And if I do a measurement, you can see it is approaching 50 degrees. Actually, I measured over 50 degrees now now. And there you can see 51 degrees. And you'll actually notice the whole torch has heated up. Because if I measure on the shaft, I'm getting 32.5. And it's actually warm all the way down here. So this is like a heat sink. And that is why I'm sure they've used this aluminium. But I can tell you after 10 minutes, if a child put their hand here, they'll feel like it's too hot. For me, over 50 degrees, you might need a warning just saying that it is hot. Because this is quite hot, even for my hands, to hold you up for more than 3 seconds. Wow, okay, that's actually pretty hot now. Right, one of the claims is that it can reach 230 meters. Well, maybe if you're standing 230 meters away, you can see someone is holding a torch. I don't think you're going to see much at 230 meters because my provisional test showed about 70 meters it's already starting to lose its brightness on the wall. Right, so what do I think of this torch? Well, my first critique is that why does the torch roll like this? 
if you put a torch down you expect it to stay where you put it for example if you look over there it is flattened but over here it's not i feel like i want to take my grinding disc and just flatten that because i keep putting the torch down and it keeps rolling away so that for me is a design fail the next thing is at the back many times you want to put the torch flat on a surface so if i wanted to do that you can see that this is impossible because the bottom is rounded so as you can see the bottom is rounded in terms of the materials, I say it's very good. This feels like a rugged torch. I wouldn't be worried if I dropped this torch. And here I'll just do some scratch tests. It does scratch pretty easily, as you can see. Look at that. But these are superficial scratches. I mean, if I try and bend it, nothing's really happening there. You could easily use this as a weapon. Looking at the design of the button and the seal over here, I'm sure this is splash proof. All right, so in closing, I do recommend this torch. There's very little in the market that I find that can compete with this torch, specifically in the brightness and that it takes AA batteries. AA batteries are easy to recharge and readily available. The D-type batteries are more expensive and often not available in the rechargeable size. Even the C-type batteries are more costly, so I like the fact that it comes with the AA batteries. This is the best torch I've had for this size, brightness, and battery type. Thanks for watching and cheers.